Meet the Red Magic 7, one of the best gaming smartphones available today. Let's first get the unboxing out of the way and then take a close look at what makes this phone stand out from the competition. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and if you like what you see, hit that like button please. Let's get started. If you've seen Red Magic phones in the past, you'd immediately notice the similarity with the box. Anyways, opening it up, we are greeted by this black insert. This one houses the SIM ejector tool, some stickers along with the regular literature and a soft case that is not run of the mill. Let's now get to the phone itself, removing it from the plastic. This here is the Supernova version. That's the transparent back with all the different specs visible underneath. Apart from the Red Magic logo that lights up, the fan too has LEDs on this one. Yep, there is active cooling. You also get a stealthier obsidian and a more flamboyant pulsar as the other two color options. Now, amongst these three, my favorite has got to be this transparent back. It looks really nice. Globally, this one is only available with the top spec variant, the one with 18 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. But in China, it's available even with lower configs, but it does cost a tad more. Anyways, guys, I am getting ahead of myself. Back to the box, we have a red and black Type-C to Type-C cable, followed by a 165 watt Nubia Neo charger. Now, this again is exclusive to China. The global version only comes with a 65 watt charger, which while not bad, it still kind of pales in comparison. I mean, it still can get the 4500 milliamp hour battery on the inside from 0 to 100 in a little over 30 minutes. But hey, the 165 watt charger here, it can help get a full charge in just about 15. So it's pretty insane. Beat it up, if you do wanna get your hands on the Chinese queue, you can check out 28mobile.com. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now coming back, the charging speeds here might be a lot more important than usual given the battery on the inside, like I mentioned, it's only 4500 mAh, which at first glance, it might not seem too bad. But once you start looking at the rest of the specs, you'd know why I personally think it might not be optimal. Now, of course, for starters, the display, it's 6.8 inches, it's AMOLED, it's a full HD plus panel, but it has 165 hertz refresh rate alongside 720 hertz touch sampling. So it's a very fast panel. The colors are fine for the most part. It covers 100% of the DCI-P3 color gamut. It's reasonably bright, not as bright as most flagships these days, uh, but it's not bad. As you can see, even under midday sun, the screen's pretty visible. However, it is also not a LTPO panel, so it cannot vary refresh rates dynamically. That said, you do get to choose between 60, 90, 120 and 165 hertz, which is fine in my humble opinion. As you can see, this Gorilla Glass 5 covered display, it's uninterrupted and that's because we have symmetric bezels to the top and bottom. The selfie camera, it's present here on the bezel up top inside, instead of inside the display. Now, if you hate that hole punch camera setup, then this might be a huge positive to you. The earpiece is present right next to the selfie camera. It does pull double duty for stereo audio, which happens to be pretty loud. Now here, see for yourself how it fares compared to the S22 Ultra. The loudspeakers, they are pretty important when gaming since they do cover up that fan noise. This 20,000 RPM fan here, it's an improvement over the last gen in a few ways. It's supposed to be a lot more silent, but you know, when you're running it, it's still obviously gonna be loud enough for you to hear. There's also an extra intake vent this time around that's supposed to improve airflow by 35%. It's worth noting that while the fan might not be visible on the other color options, it's still there. The innards don't change between different variants. Now, apart from this active air cooling, you also have liquid cooling under the hood alongside other materials to help with heat dissipation. All this to make sure the SOC inside keeps chugging on and not throttle when pushed. And they seem to have done a wonderful job. Talking about the SOC, we have a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 running the show and it's paired with 8, 12, 16 or even 18 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM alongside 128, 256 or 512 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage. Parts of which can of course be used as RAM as is the trend these days. As you can see, I finally did manage to get my hands on a phone that crossed the million mark on Antutu. Now outside of synthetic benchmarks, the performance feels as good as you'd expect it to be on a gaming focused flagship smartphone. I ran Genshin Impact with all the settings maxed out. 
Now this is a game that tops out at 60 FPS and the Red Magic 7 had no issues pushing 60 frames consistently throughout my gaming session. This was the same with pretty much any game I ended up testing. When you are gaming on this phone, now there are a few things to note. You can launch game space right from this toggle to the side. Once you are in game space, you can tinker around with a lot of settings, even on a per game basis. For example, from this side, you can switch the touch sampling rate, the performance modes. From the other side, I can again choose performance modes, adjust brightness, warp refresh rates, fan profiles, status screen recording, check the FPS and other performance metrics. There's just an overload of functionality here. And let's take a moment to talk about this one. This is charge separation. What it does is basically stop the phone from charging the battery. So let's say you're gaming plugged in and turn on charge separation. Now the phone is literally running off wall power and this helps in two ways. First, there is no heat being generated due to a battery being charged. So the performance doesn't have to throttle because of the heat from the battery. Secondly, it causes the battery to consume fewer charge cycles, helping preserve battery health in the long run. Pretty cool, right? Now you can also get to the button mapper from this menu. Oh yeah, the keys. To the right of the phone, we have two capacitive areas that can be mapped to just about anything on screen. So aim and shoot, for example, with shooting games or accelerate and brake with racing titles. While not as good as physical keys, they are still excellent to use. Very responsive given their 500 Hz touch sampling rate. The fact that you get faint haptic feedback on every press, I feel that's a very nice little touch. While we are here, let's quickly take a look at the rest of the placements. Now, barring these keys, an intake vent, microphone, and power key are present to the right. Another mic and headphone jack are present up top. Headphone jack, hey, that's a big thing, right, these days? In the game space switch, the exhaust, and volume keys reside to the left. And finally, at the bottom, you find the primary speaker and microphone alongside a USB Type-C port and SIM tray. No microSD support, but it can take two nano SIM cards and has a rubber grommet for what it's worth. The sides beat it up are anodized aluminium. At 9.5 millimeters of thickness and 215 grams of weight, the Red Magic 7 is neither slim nor light. But it still feels like a nice phone in hand. I mean, to just use as a regular phone, it feels fine. Feels solid. And here to the back, here's where we find a triple camera setup. This is very similar to what we got last year. The primary, it's 64 megapixels f1.8. It seems to do a reasonably good job. It can do 8K 30 video and also 4K 60, which frankly, I think is the better option to shoot. There's nothing spectacular with these optics, but for a gaming phone, they are more than passable enough. The secondary is an 8 megapixel f2 ultra wide with a 120 degree field of view. Weirdly, this can do no video whatsoever. And then there is a third 2 megapixel macro just there to make up numbers like with every other phone. The selfie camera is an 8 megapixel f2, it's okay, gets the job done, can only do 1080 video by the way. The camera interface, it is pretty solid, not a lot of people know this, a lot of software features we take as granted on some phones these days, they first originated on Nubia. For example, see this, how you can set focus and exposure at different points. Nubia has been doing this for at least 8 years now. With a macro camera, we get a magnifying glass with focus peaking on it. Well, it doesn't change the fact that macro cameras are there just to push up the sensor numbers. At least there's a little bit of effort being taken, so it's a nice touch. Also, noticeably, the Pro mode works not just with the primary, but also the ultra wide. Now, it's not just with the camera software, even with the user interface. This year's Red Magic OS 5.0 built on top of Android 12, when it's filled to the brim with features. You have easy widgets to turn on the power saving mode, you know, turn it on and off. You can also control the fan from here, the fingerprint scanner, it can measure your heart rate. And the fingerprint scanner itself, it's of the optical variety, it's present under the display, it's very fast and quick. Face Unlock 2 is present in Accounted 4, it works just as fast as you could expect it to. You get freeform windows for better multitasking, an entertainment toolbox aka sidebar to launch these apps from and also do other things. You can tinker around with themes, icons, you even get always on functionality. Overall, as overloaded as the interface might be on features, it's still rapid fast, especially with that 165Hz refresh, the phone feels super responsive. So now, the big question, what's the damage? How much is all this gonna set you back? The Red Magic 7 starts at $629, US making it one of the best gaming phone deals at the moment. Weirdly, this is one of the few times that the global pricing is a lot more competitive than actual Chinese pricing. Probably the charger difference kind of offset some of that price difference but anyways there are also a lot more SKUs in china like for example note that the red magic 7 tops out at 12 256 in china if you want 18 gigs of ram you're gonna have to go for the pro which is not sold globally 
Anyways, regardless of which queue you go for, the price for what's on offer, it seems surprisingly reasonable. And I did walk away intrigued by what the Red Magic 7 has to offer. Personally, I would have wanted a few things different if I'm gonna nitpick maybe a 5,500 or at least a 5,000 milliamp hour battery here with maybe a stronger primary camera. And if I'm gonna go all nitpicky, then I might as well ask for a subtler finish as an option. Obsidian is pretty subtle, but I would have liked something, you know, that doesn't look so gamery. Now, what about you? What do you think of the Red Magic 7? Did you find this phone impressive? Do you think they should have done something different? Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And with that, we get to the end of this video. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks for watching. Until next time, my name is Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.